about the history of nuclear energy? Oh, my very good. I'm here to, to talk up, to talk about the process of how nuclear nuclear power. Hi, works. I'm Bill, and I will talk to you about the uranium sources in the Philippines and the Kandu reactor. I'm Angel Amra, and I'll talk to you about the statistics or gaps. Of the nuclear power plant. Hi, I'm Rod Arrieta and I'll be talking about the safety measures of a nuclear power plant past and we are the nuclear group. The best power plant for the years 2020 to 2050. The first nuclear reactor. The first nuclear reactor was built in 1942 through the influence of Albert Einstein, Enrico Fermi, and many other prominent physicists. Under President Roosevelt, the United States granted financial assistance to nuclear research programs. The vast financial and physical resources of North America and the talents of scientists were harnessed under a very secret program, codenamed the Manhattan Project. Fermi and his team constructed the first reactor in a squash court at the University of Chicago on December 1942. It took three years of concentrated effort to obtain the necessary quantity of uranium-235. The reactor consisted of a pile of graphite blocks, which acted as a moderator. Lumps of uranium were inserted into holes in the graphite. To control the reaction, neutron-absorbing cadmium strips were inserted into the pile. The neutron and radiation levels were monitored as the reactor was constructed of layer upon layer of graphite. The neutron intensity level increased dramatically when the 57th layer was added. The first chain reaction was occurring. Cadmium strips were quickly inserted into the pile to shut down the reaction before heat and radiation could reach dangerous levels. So, nuclear power plant uses the heat generated by nuclear fission process to drive a steam turbine which generates usable electricity. The underlying process is the same for all power plants designed. What differs is the way the nuclear reaction is controlled. Inside of an atom, there is a core, or a nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. When the nucleus split, nuclear reactor Nuclear fission occurs, and this is the start of the process of generating electricity in the nuclear power plant. So this, this is what happens. A coolant is used to keep the reactor from getting too hot. The coolant absorbs the heat produced by fission process, then travels through tubes until it reaches the steam boiler. The steam causes the turbine to turn, but before that, the steam is from the heated seawater. Then, after the turbine turns, it then turns the generator to create electricity. Hope, hope you learn. Hope, learn it from me. In the Philippines, uranium prospection and exploration is being performed by Macro Asia Group. We also have thorium distributors in the Philippines, PMAC July Enterprise, Davis Technical Solutions, BF Metal Corporation, Golden Bat Far East Inc. Recycled uranium and plutonium is another source and currently saves 1,500 to 2,000 tons of uranium per year. Depending on whether just the plutonium or also the uranium is considered. And now, the Kandu reactor. The Kandu reactor is a nuclear reactor designed and developed in Canada that takes a different approach to nuclear energy. In a candy reactor, they use normal uranium-238. Then they surround the fuel with heavy water. The advantages are that uranium-238 is more abundant and cannot be used to create nuclear bombs. The disadvantage is that the heavy water is expensive. 
I will present to you the statistics that prove that nuclear power plant is the best for the Philippines for the years 2020 to 2050. According to World Nuclear Association, this graph shows the U.S. electricity production costs from 1995 to 2008 of non-renewable power plants, which includes oil, natural gas, coal, and nuclear. The y-axis presents the price of electricity in cents per kilowatt hour, and the x-axis shows the years of electricity production. As you can see, the oil and natural gas's cost for electricity production is fluctuating, and as of now, the price is slowly increasing and can lead to high electricity rates in the future. For coal, the price is relatively stagnant, but is higher compared to nuclear which has a slowly decreasing electricity production cost which makes nuclear power cheap. The graph presents the projected electricity cost for Finland in the year 2003. In the x-axis, you will see the different sources of energy and then in the y-axis presents European cent per kilowatt hour cost. The Nord Pool electricity price for May 2003 is 4.24 European cent per kilowatt hour. For nuclear, there is less, there is less projected electricity cost which is 2.37 European cent per kilowatt hour and which, is mu and which is much lower than gas, coal, wind, and even North Pole. Because nuclear doesn't have greenhouse gas emissions, it, does, it doesn't have to pay for emission trade costs. Next is, this graph shows the loss of life experience due to various risks. The x-axis presents the various risks that the person can die from. The y-axis presents the number of people who die because of these various risks. The number one cause of loss of life is living in poverty, which kills 3,500 per day, and the least is living near a nuclear power plant, which doesn't even kill a person in one day. Next is the sources of radiation exposure the U.S. comprised the f of the following man-made and natural sources. The blue represents the natural sources and the yellow represents the man-made sources. 82% comprise the radiation exposure we get from natural sources like radon, radon, which is 55%, cosmic 8%, terrestrial 8%, and internal 11%. 19% comprise the man-made sources such as 11% for medical x-rays, 4% for nuclear medicine, 3% for consumer products, and less than 1% for others which includes nuclear power plant. So there, are, so there really is no risk in power plant radiation exposure. Policy is related to nuclear energy and its uses. Section 2 of the Declaration of Policy of the Department of Energy Act of 1992 hereby declares the policy of the state to ensure a continuous, adequate, and economic supply of energy with the end view of ultimately achieving self-reliance in the country's energy requirements through the integrated and intensive exploration and development of the country's indigenous energy resources. It also aims to rationalize, integrate, and coordinate the various programs of the government towards self-sufficiency and enhance productivity in power and energy without sacrificing ecological concerns. The Philippine Energy Plan for 1998 to 2035 is a plan prepared by the Department of Energy, which envisions that nuclear power shall provide 600 megawatts of electricity in the year 2021 to 2025. Government Agencies Concerned with Nuclear Energy in the Philippines The Philippine Atomic Energy Commission, or the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute, is tasked to conduct or cause the research and development of processes, materials, and devices used in the production of atomic energy. It is mandated to undertake research and development activities in the peaceful uses of nuclear energy, to institute regulations on the said uses, and to carry out the enforcement of said regulations to protect health and safety of radiation workers and the general public. Another government agency is the Nuclear Power Steering Committee. It has eight subcommittees which focus on different branches of the development and management of nuclear-related energy. 
It has also conducted summer training courses for secondary education teachers on strengthening nuclear science in secondary education. Most importantly, it has submitted 10 potential sites where a nuclear power plant can be built in the Philippines. With this great harnessed energy, safety surely will not come last in the list. These modern power plants have advanced safety features that haven't been available in the past decades, which could save a lot of lives. Right now, the machines in the power plant have redundant systems that are concerned with the chain reaction of uranium. If the coolant doesn't work, then another one will replace it. If that doesn't work, it is replaced by something else, and so on until the system cools down. There are also what they call seismic measures or safety measures against earthquakes, which are taken at all stages of design and construction of nuclear power plants. There is also environmental radiation monitoring, where electricity utilities manage the radiation exposure so that residents around the plant receive less than 0.05 millisieverts per year. The engineers are also producing many passive safety features for future nuclear power plants. They are called passive safety features because these features do not require operator actions or electronic feedback in order to shut down safely in the event of a type of emergency. The new Westinghouse AP1000, the AP stands for Advanced Passive, for example, has a huge emergency water reservoir above the reactor vessel that's held back by valves. If the cooling system fails, the valves open and a highly reliable force takes over, gravity. Water pours down to cool the outside of the containment vessel, then another highly reliable force, convection, kicks in. As the water turns to steam, it rises. Then it cools under the roof, turns back into a liquid, and pours down again. There are also the so-called generator for reactors. Many will do away with water using elements such as helium but liquid sodium as a coolant. Most also get rid of solid uranium-235 as a fuel, relying instead on different uranium isotopes or liquid uranium mixtures or even thorium as the primary fuel. The new design that's closest to commercial electricity generation is the pebble bed reactor, which has been under development for decades in Germany, then South Africa, and now China and the U.S. Its uranium fuel is encased in more than 300,000 tennis ball-sized pebbles, each one containing thousands of tiny graphite-coated fuel seeds, like a metal pomegranate. The re radioactive fission products are absorbed in the coatings, and the fuel doesn't get hot enough to melt down even if the plant loses all its cooling for days. The advantages of having nuclear power plants. First, environmental friendliness. Nuclear power plants can help preserve the environment by lessening the dependence on fossil fuels as a source of energy. Since nuclear power plants produce power without relying on these resources, they can help create cleaner air. Safety. Despite well-publicized accidents such as Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima, nuclear power plants have proven to be really safe. According to ecolo.org, the chances of dying as a result of a nuclear power plant disaster is lower than dying from heart disease, fire, homicide, or, or motor vehicle accident. Energy supply. Since the energy produced by nuclear power plants is man-made, it means that there is less of a need to depend on natural resources. This eliminates the concern about running out of energy due to exhausting the world's resources. Uranium, which is the primary source of nuclear fuel, is used for no other primary purpose and exists in abundant quantities enough to last for billions of years. Cost savings. Nuclear power plants can produce energy in a more cost-effective manner. Nuclear electricity is only slightly more expensive than coal-fired electricity, which costs 1.88 cents per kilowatt hour. Waste disposal. Though nuclear waste can be dangerous if not disposed of properly, it has an advantage of being small in quantity and can be buried deep under the ground. This virtually eliminates the caused by possible exposure. Nuclear power plants consume uranium, which differs from coal energy production, which produces uranium as a waste product that stays at the surface. The disadvantages of nuclear power plants, on the other hand. Nuclear power generates radiation, which can be harmful or even fatal to infected people. A nuclear meltdown can often occur, which will release massive amounts of radiation to the community. Nuclear waste dumps can spontaneously combust without warning. Nuclear reactors only last for about 40 to 50 years, so where they are extremely productive, they break down and are costly to replace. 
There are international dangers too. Some reactors produce plutonium, which can be used to make nuclear weapons. If the whole world were to use these, they would have unlimited access to nuclear weapons. Poisonous waste is produced, some of which is highly radioactive. Disposal of this radioactive waste has not been safely achieved. The power station is very expensive to build. When the costs are taken into account, the electricity produced by the power station is relatively expensive. Careless disposal of waste in the past has led to pollution of land, rivers, and the ocean. And that's about it. See why we should invest on nuclear power? No emissions and fewer accidents. Go nuke and you'll never rebuke.